Everyone loves to train chest and biceps. And there's a muscle group out there that will actually help you look like you lift both in your clothes and out of them, and most people are training it wrong. I'm talking about your shoulders. So along with your lats, if you develop them properly, you will achieve that V taper, V shape look. But like I said, 90% of guys out there are training them in a way that is less than optimal. So let's go through what muscles actually make up the shoulders and what is the best way to train them. So there's four main muscles that make up our shoulder that we're interested in from a visual point of view. So they are our front delts, our side delts, our rear delts, and our upper traps. So let's start with our front delts. So these are involved in any kind of horizontal pressing. So any bench pressing, any incline pressing, any machine pressing, any kind of press, your front delts are gonna get a fairly decent stimulus from. And who out there skips chest day? Absolutely no one. So for the most part, front delts are actually quite well developed in most guys. So what exercises also hit our front delts quite heavily? Well, shoulder pressing does. So maybe if everyone already trains chest quite a lot and front delts already get a lot of love, do you think shoulder pressing is absolutely essential? In my opinion, it's not. So yeah, I actually just said, if you want to get big shoulders, shoulder pressing or overhead pressing isn't essential. Personally, shoulders are probably my strongest muscle group and I haven't done any overhead pressing in quite a few years and I haven't lost any development. In fact, they've actually grown after I took them out. Not saying shoulder pressing is bad, but if you want the optimal way to train shoulders, then they're not required. So what do you do if you want big front delts? You just keep bench pressing, bro. So next up, let's look at our side delts. And these are an altogether different story to our front delts. Most people lack development in them. Everyone benches, everyone's got the hunched over look, but very few people have that full three-dimensional shoulder look and having well-developed side delts is an essential part of that. No large compound exercises we do really hit our side delts with any kind of stimulus. So we need to isolate them. So for that reason, in my opinion, exercises like lateral raises and upright rows are absolutely an essential part of every shoulder program if we want maximum development. The second thing to note about side delts is what kind of muscle are they and how best do we train them? Well, have you ever heard someone say, bro, my side delts are absolutely fucked. I cannot even lift my shoulders. Probably never because they're a muscle that are quite difficult to damage. It's quite hard to get those little micro tears that cause growth in that muscle. So that means they're a muscle group that's quite highly resistant to fatigue that recovers quite quickly. And they're also quite slow twitch in nature in terms of their muscle fiber type. That all essentially means is that we can train them often, we can train them with higher reps and they can take quite a lot of volume and still recover quite quickly. So with all these things put together, training our side delts once a week, like you might do in a traditional shoulder body part split is not an effective way to train your shoulders. Training your side delts two, three, four, maybe even five days a week, presuming you can recover, is probably gonna be a much more effective way to get bigger shoulders. Next, let's move on to our rear delts. So unlike our side delts, these are actually used during some compound exercises like rows. However, the way that most people row is they use as much weight as possible, a shitty technique, and they pull usually with their lats and with the line of pull being around their stomach. With our rear delts located on our upper shoulders, this is not gonna actually stimulate them too much. A rowing movement whereby the line of pull is more chest level, causing you to use a lot less weight is gonna be the way to stimulate your lats from rowing. However, very few people implement this kind of row in their program. So it's a really good idea to implement an isolation exercises as well. So just like our side delts, these are criminally undeveloped compared to our front delts in most guys you see down the gym. So we've got to isolate them. So for that reason, a face pull or any kind of rear delt fly 
is an essential part of every program, in my opinion. Much like the side delts, they are mainly slow twitch in nature, quick to recover, difficult to damage. So they'll respond really well to high frequencies, being trained two, three, four plus times a week, and using higher volumes, and generally using higher rep ranges from the 10 to 20, 30 range. Last but not least, the upper traps. So similar to your front delts, these get a fair amount of stimulation from other exercises. So any deadlift variation you're doing, any heavy row variation you're doing, any lateral raise variation you're doing, or even any face pull variation you're doing, it's going to give your upper traps some stimulation. So for most people, provided you're following an overall rounded program, we don't really need to isolate them that much. However, if they are a stubborn body part for you and you're unhappy with your upper trap development, despite doing all these other exercises, then you could definitely chuck in some shrugs as a little top up. So again, doing these properly, not the funky chicken dance that you see a lot of people do with a shitload of weight. We're talking full range of motion, pause at the top, pause at the bottom, and generally biasing the higher rep ranges is gonna be the best way of training your upper traps if you feel like you need that. So let's put all this together and give you a training program that's gonna develop your shoulders in an optimal science-based way and compare that to the bro split that most people are gonna be following. So for a bro split, shoulder day, it's usually like Thursday, maybe even on another day. And you would do a heavy overhead press, maybe some dumbbell shoulder press, some lateral raises, and then you do some shrugs. This is usually done with as much weight as possible often in like the five to 10 rep range as it's all about lifting heavy, right? If we want to follow a science-based approach, we train our shoulders two to four days a week, maybe even more for advanced trainers. We'd use mainly lateral raises, upright rows, face pulls and reverse flies. We'd bias the, the side delts and the rear delts a lot more. And our rep ranges would mainly be in the 10 to 20 with excellent form, sometimes going up to 30. With the knowledge of the science and the physiology that we've just discovered, do we need a dedicated shoulder day? Well, for most people are gonna do pretty well sticking to their main compound exercises and then adding in rear and side out isolation exercises two to four days a week. And that should give you a more rounded shoulder development. So give this a go and watch your shoulders become more three-dimensional in nature. Thanks for watching.